Hi guys, it's Debbie, and this morning I finally saw Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. As soon as I got out of the cinema, I was actually looking online for an image of Kylo Ren to put on my social media to share that I'd been to the cinema, that I'd seen the film, and all these search results were popping up saying how bad the film was, how critics absolutely hated it, how it had basically ruined the Star Wars saga, and I couldn't believe what I was reading because I had just enjoyed the film so much. But apparently you can't say that because if you do, you're immediately labeled as a millennial crybaby social justice warrior who just wants everything to be politically correct, somebody who doesn't understand the meaning of the saga, somebody who doesn't care about the developments of the saga, somebody who basically was just interested in seeing whether hashtag Rayla was confirmed. You just have bad taste. I've literally heard people saying that if you enjoyed this film, it's just because you have bad taste. You absolutely can't go to the cinema and enjoy a film because you're a fan and you were looking forward to this moment and you saved up your money to go to the cinema, maybe you get a good seat at the cinema with some popcorn, eager to watch your favourite characters. You just have bad taste and apparently you shouldn't speak about it. And I'm not speaking about professional film critics who have to set aside their personal taste and watch a film from a technical point of view, analysing the editing, the acting, uh, the cinematography. Apparently nobody can enjoy it, not even your kids who are watching it over the Christmas break as a special treat. They don't know what the real Star Wars is all about. There is so much anger surrounding cinema today that everybody's entitled to their opinion, but at the same time, basically, nobody's entitled to their opinion. That opinion is just bad taste. I always try to keep my channel a place where somebody can come up to me and say, Hey Debbie, I've never seen The Godfather, uh, I've never seen Pulp Fiction, I didn't like A Clockwork Orange, but hey, I went to the movies and I had a blast watching Batman vs Superman. I would respond by saying, Hey, I think you should watch these films for this and this reason. And I also think that Batman vs Superman is absolutely awful. For this and this reason. This doesn't mean that I'm a politically correct warrior who thinks every film is special in its way and every film needs to be loved and appreciated for what it is. But with Star Wars it's became a totally new environment and I'm going to get to that in a moment. So The Rise of Skywalker is the third and final chapter in this new Star Wars uh, trilogy, the sequel trilogy, which has been running been for the last, what is it, four or five years. The previous chapter, The Last Jedi, met a lot of hate. I didn't mind it, but I can tell why some people really didn't like it. For example, one of the points of criticism on which I agree were the meaningless storylines and characters that were totally unnecessary for the main plot. They didn't even add extra context, they weren't there for comedic relief, they didn't lighten the main plot, they didn't enrich it, they were just there. So when I heard all the criticism towards the film, also based on many other points, I thought to myself, um, I don't totally agree with those opinions, but I can see where they're coming from. Now in my opinion, this 2019 chapter, uh, The Rise of the Skywalker, is way better than the previous The Last Jedi chapter. I actually cried during the second half of the film, and I'm sorry to say this, and we'll get to things step by step, but there is no possible way of making a Star Wars film without pleasing some people and upsetting others. The new Star Wars films are such huge releases that people are talking about them months, if not years, before their release date. The advertisement is huge and pressuring. You can buy anything that is publicised in Star Wars. In Italy at one point even the oranges at the supermarket had Star Wars labels on them. And if you're a film fan there is this huge pressure to watch the Star Wars films. Actually not just to watch them but to become a die-hard expert about them. You have to know every single detail, all the names of all the background characters, the nitty-gritty of the political relationships, everything. And it's not the specifications of an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. These are details of a setting which is basically never-ending, a mammoth source material. These are films which are ingrained in our pop culture. Even if you have never seen a Star Wars movie, even if you don't like science fiction slash action slash space related films, you definitely heard about Darth Vader. You know more or less what the Star Wars films are about. There is no way of making a perfect Star Wars sequel. Yes, there is a baseline to not make them terrible, but there's no way of making a perfect one, one that everybody would like. I would have made the movies in one way. You would have made the movies in another way. You would have made them in another way still. Yes, there are those baselines, but the context is huge. Especially now that we're nine films in, setting aside all the standalone projects, this saga has been going on for 40 plus years, and we have to draw a conclusion. Will that please everybody? 
No. And is it really that easy to please everybody? No. Keeping all that in mind, was the rise of Skywalker really that terrible? Or was it just that you were expecting something different? Because everybody would have expected something different. If Joker with Hacking Phoenix had been a bad film, everybody would have moaned and groaned and complained, but that would have been that. The impact would have been relatively small, but an Avengers film, a Harry Potter film, just as a Star Wars film, doesn't receive the same scrutiny because of everything that is behind them. That being said, The Rise of Skywalker is definitely not a perfect film. It has its flaws. We'll get to that in a moment. Again, there is that baseline. Uh, and I definitely don't want to live in a world in which everything is happy and perfect and we have to accept films just for what they are, never criticise anything and peace and love and hashtag Raylo. Now getting into the plot, there's actually not that much that I can say without literally spoiling everything. Uh, but I can speak about some main points, uh, some things you saw from the promotional material, and I can definitely speak about the two main characters, Rey and Kylo, who we already met in the previous chapters. In The Last Jedi, we left Rey as a very dubious character. We realised just how powerful she could be and, and how such a power can end up being dangerous when used unwisely. Her antagonist is Kylo Ren, who's always been driven by hate, by rage, he wants to create his own world of power, but who seem to always be a little hesitant. So of course these two characters are very interesting, they both tug at opposite ends of the force, but while still acknowledging how the other side could be very tempting. In The Rise of Skywalker, these topics are brought further, along with many other topics which I can't really talk about without spoiling everything, but you have the huge battle scenes, these epic standoffs, along with all the adventures the main group of characters has to undertake. The cinematography is amazing and there are very few scenes which just aren't beautiful. Regardless of what the characters are doing, the backgrounds are jaw-dropping. You have scenery which ranges from vast deserts to water crashing around the character, gloomy skies with huge backdrops, spacecrafts, moments in which the characters are climbing and falling and jumping, making us feel as if we're there teetering off the edge with them. And one thing I don't usually focus on um, in films, uh, because I don't actually watch that many movies with high intensity choreographed action sequences, the Matrix style is what I'm talking about. But again, one of the things I don't really focus on is how well carried out the combat scenes are. I mean, how the characters are actually moving. But that element really stood out in Rise of the Skywalker, especially with Rey. There were some scenes with really impressive stunts, jumps, flips, you name it. So for a person who rarely even notices this element, to actually stand out means something. Another element I appreciated in this film is and actually an old theme that is throughout the Star Wars movies, and that is the way the topic of love is treated. In all the Star Wars films, love has never been covered in a classic way. Even Luke and Leia, who everybody thought were going to be a thing, turned out to actually be brother and sister. And that was back in the 70s. You never really see a typical depiction of love in these films. So because of how Rey and Kylo interact, because of their struggling relationship with the Force and how that led them to become antagonists, many have speculated that, that they could become a thing. And The Rise of Skywalker will give you the answers to your questions regarding that topic, but it didn't drop everything as many critics slammed this film to be. No, not even the film, the approach the audience had towards it, as if the audience only cared about this Raylo thing. The previous film tackled the topic, just as this one does, as we all knew it would, regardless of the answer to that question. But it also tackles friendships, odd friendships, uh, the ups and downs of friendships, strong friendships, loyalty, and that's what I always loved about Star Wars, how it is set in a galaxy far, far away, but how it, the characters have down-to-earth feelings. Sometimes it feels more down-to-earth, more realistic than many films set in our cities here on planet Earth. As I was saying earlier, I'm not blindly defending this film because there were some elements I didn't like. There is actually one scene with one line in particular, and when you see the film, you realise what line I'm talking about, in which the whole audience at the cinema in which I was, myself included, groaned. And it was actually a pretty important line, so they definitely could have, you know, improved that. Then the general background adventure was actually really focused on the, okay, we need to go here, and in order to get there, we need this thing. And then once we get there, we need to go to this other place, but we will need that thing to get there. And then from there, we'll need to go to this other place, to the point that I was asking myself, okay, where were they going again? But I think the creators decided to focus the story mostly on the characters because it is the end of a saga 
and 10 years from now you will want to remember the characters, their most memorable moments, their, their relationships, uh, their most memorable lines. You won't want to remember the name of a town on a planet which they visited. So that being said, the story either needed a longer run in time or it had to focus less on this uh, moving around like in a step-by-step -step process, if that makes any sense. I think the fact that this is the huge conclusion to a huge saga is uh, why the nostalgia element was so big here. And this was actually one of the main points of heavy criticism towards this film. A lot of people felt that this film piled on a lot of nostalgic elements without giving us anything new or anything interesting. Well, in my opinion, the general Kylo Ren story arc was wonderful. He is a great new character. I can understand how the character of Rey can be attached to the element of nostalgia because she is just the good old hero. But in my opinion, they're both really interesting to get to know. They are always stepping over that fine line between the dark side of the force and the use of it in a mindful manner because the dark side has always intrigued viewers. People have always debated, spoke about how they can see why certain characters would have chosen that side and to have this brought up as one of the biggest topics is interesting. So I don't think the film is just a pile of nostalgia. This uh, this is the conclusion to a story that's been going on for over 40 years. If it hadn't had nostalgic elements, then people would have complained that it didn't have this and that. Imagine if the sole focus of this film was, uh, what is it, D.O., the new robot. People would have said, but what about this character and that character and the soundtrack? It's obviously impossible to please everybody. Choices have to be made. Anyway, even if you found this film to be the worst um, ending to the Star Wars saga ever. If you thought the whole trilogy was the worst trilogy, the worst Star Wars trilogy ever, at least on a positive note, it brought Adam Driver as a character, I was saying Adam Wren, Adam Driver as a character into the spotlight because I think that otherwise it would have still taken a few years for the wider audience to get to know him. He is such a good actor, there are so many good films with him out there. He just starred alongside Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story which was released about a week or two ago. It's a completely different concept from the Star Wars films but in it Driver does a perfect rendition of a breakdown, of a break up, of letting his emotions free. But if that isn't your cup of tea, there are many other films with him out there. So this video is probably getting quite long by now. Um, unfortunately there's so many other things I would like to say about the film but I'm afraid of spoiling things. So I'll wrap it up here and now I'd like to hear instead what you think about all these topics. I want to hear your opinion. Let me know everything with a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye!